Welcome to another special episode of the Eve Prosper Market Show with our market maker interviews. Uh, we hear all from FCs and alliance leaders and others, masters of the game metas, but we hardly hear from uh, industrialists and market makers of uh, on the economic side of the scale. So my guest tonight is uh, Charlinda Akateru from Akateru Integrated Astrometrics, and he is a professional booster manufacturer. Thanks again for being on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start where we usually do and uh, ask you about what brought you into EVE and what keeps you playing now. Uh, back in 2007, I saw a Flash ad for uh, for EVE and, you know, spaceships that look cool. And also, naturally, first thing I do is check the forums. And all I saw was, like, new bros bitching about how hard it is and, you know, you can never catch up and everything else. So... Being an avid World of Warcraft player at the time, I went on uh, uh, on WoW's off-topic forum and I asked about the game. And there were six responses to the thread. Five of those responses were more of the same about how the high skill point players will just murder you all day long. And then somebody linked the PC Gamer article about the Gottingham Social Club Ubiquist Raff heist. And they were linking this as an example of what a crappy community it is and how the devs don't care and everything else. And I read this article about how somebody spent 18 months metic like meticulously plotting vengeance on behalf of somebody else that had hired them to screw this person over. And I said, you know what? That's the game I want to play. Well, I'm glad that uh, that uh, we we have a similarity there. That uh, Eve lets you play the villain and get the kind of the kind of role play that I didn't think any other game would do. So uh, I'm always I'm always glad to hear the story, that kind of story. Yeah, that, that's that's my biggest thing. I mean, uh, I, I agree with Sir Molly's sentiment from way back when about how everyone in Eve is a role player, like it or not. That's just the setting of the game. And I mean, in, in World of Warcraft, I was on an RP PvP server. I used to be on Lightning Hoof Horde side. So I was all about playing the villain and PvP. And, you know, this is the perfect atmosphere for that, whether you want to be a role player or not. Everybody's involved. Yeah. And, um, I mean, from my side, the, the case was, um, even I had a bunch of RP nerds when I, I tried WoW and Eve. Like I started even WoW at the same time and just did not get sucked into WoW. And my friends were like, "No, no, no, it's a uh, RP kind of thing. Like you can do all this stuff." I'm like, "No, no, no, it's like a red versus blue. Nobody's actually evil. You, <laughs> when you get to the top and the end of the game, everybody's just misunderstood the other side, and it's it's not." you can't be actually evil and Eve actually gives you the space and area to either be truly good or all the way down to the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of shades of gray with this game. I've kind of tried over the years to be as close to the far of, of the bad spectrum as possible with my RP stuff. Um, if, if there's any role players that listen re regularly, They'll recognize Habo Hedge from uh, you know, backstage and the whole Mimitar terrorist thing. I kind of made a splash back in, what, 2009, 2010 with some roleplay stuff I did. But I uh, haven't been able to reach that level of mustache trolling this yet since. Well, that's that's definitely excellent. So uh, this being market oriented, I got to ask, because uh, it usually makes up a pretty decent story. How would you end up earning your first billion-esque? I finally got tired of trying to force myself to do PvE because I can't stand doing, you know, shooting the, the little red things. And I decided I was going to make a market alt. So that's how Shrine of was created. And I spent, you know, a few weeks trading up the trade skills and getting the taxes down and uh, <laughs> fleeting with my main to do missions to get her standings up. And I just played the one cent game in Jitta for actually no, I started on Mars on Mars for about three weeks, and I didn't see the kind of volume I wanted to see. Margins were okay, but I moved to Jitta and the volume went crazy. And within I think a week and a half, I broke a billion in profit. But then it's like, okay, this is nice and it's sustainable, but it's so bloody boring. I hear you so there. So that was the end of that. Yeah, um, that's that's been a, a 
a stopping point for me is that uh, once you sort of get it, that you can grind up the ISK. It's just that you end up spending a lot of in-game hours messing with the orders and it doesn't really have as much of the, it, it, it's hard to get out, get out of that niche into something new. If you wanted to be like, either it doesn't work or uh, wanted to try something new, or it gets to be uh, just time consuming and boring. If you're just trying to be the better human robot. Right. And like th theoretically I'm going into it thinking, you know, I could just do this for like five minutes every hour or two and continue PVPing on my main and doing things that I want to do. And once you get to a certain point where you've got so many active orders and, you know, just going through them all to update and make sure that they're the highest buy and the lowest sell just takes so much time. It's, it's not a simple five minutes here or there. And, you know, like I, I would read market discussion and I would see people talking about these low volume, high value, high margin items. And, uh, I, I tried with faction ships, faction modules, like, you know, Serpentis webs, dominations, warp scrambles, all this crap. And now it's like, okay, less orders, higher margins, but low volume. I might as well be in a mar again. So either way, it just, it wasn't something that I felt like I could maintain my sanity and maintain the profit at the same time. So I guess that does move us on to the next thing. Um, as far as, as, the the market orders go yeah the one isking thing is a is a pain in the butt and it can make money it's but it's not exactly fun uh what kind of projects have you done outside of that and what's your favorite that you've worked on i kind of got thrown in the null sec really really early in 2008 i built a null sec industry corporation we were in a terrible goon pet alliance called venom alliance living all the way down in Omist. And uh, my, my corporation was building capital ships that would go on and be sold to uh, to TCF for the most part. And I think a couple actually went to Red. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot to do with the actual industrial aspect. I was just kind of more administrating things and you know, keeping everybody from ripping each other's throats out and fighting over Veldspar and stupid crap like that. But it, it was successful. You know, I, I made a good bit of money, but it wasn't like my personal profit at all. Just went back into the production. Um, once Venom had this little drama cascade and, and failed into three or four different alliances, I kind of went like small gang pirate and low sec for a little while till I really got deeper into Eve's role play, and that was when I, I had my little high sec extortion corp thing. But the entire thing, like it, it wasn't simple privateers or, or marmites or code or whoever. There was like role play background to everything. So we set up a Mimitar terrorist war deck corp in Amar High Sec and actually made a good bit of money off of extorting corporations, you know, for, for us to drop the war deck. They had to pay reparations to the Mimitar people on behalf of us. Oh, that's excellent. Right. So we actually had a, a a Severance Corp that had left Severance and were setting up in, what is it, Penergman over there by Amar, that mission hub. They gave us a Navy APOC at the time. A Navy APOCs were like 800 mil for the hull. So they gave us a, Na a NAV POC in reparations. And we were paid 300 mil in reparations by another corp, 1.5 bill by another corp. But there was only like four or five corporations that paid out of the dozens that we actually wore decked. But we wouldn't drop the word deck until I didn't see anybody from that corp log in for at least a couple of weeks. Like, we were either killing your corporation or you were going to pay. And there was only six of us all together, so that was a good project to run. That sounds excellent. So, um, just to... Uh, I, I I really do love those those side corps. I've always wanted to start one myself, but time and effort. So I brought you on so we can talk about boosters. But before we get on to that, uh, you had mentioned the PvP and the RP aspects. Um, wh what are you specifically doing these days that uh, keeps you keeps you playing Eve? It's it's weird because you know Charlinda was my trade all, and now I find myself spending a lot more time on that character than I do on my main. I've actually been doing like little minor solo PvP and frigate holes in the faction warfare area in Placid, uh, 
kind of in my spare time when I don't have to be doing something with the pastas or hauling something here or there. Um, we were pretty split up. Uh, I, I was taking an approach for logistics to having refinery towers set up in different places and then moving the refined product to Placid to do the manufacturing. And, you know, obviously that means flying back and forth on a blockade runner quite a bit more than I would have liked. So we're actually moving into wormhole space to kind of centralize everything. We're doing that today. We just got the first tower set up in our new headquarters. So we're going to be spending the next couple of days doing that. I wish that I was PVPing more, but I'm thinking that now that we're getting the corporation centralized and we're actually going to have everyone all in one place instead of, you know, alpha cells over here, bravo cells over there, then uh, I'll actually have 10 people online and we're all in the same place at the same time and we can just say, hey guys, jump in these ships, let's go. Yeah, there's definitely a line you have to walk if you want to do both industry and fighting. It, it's very hard to to be a- actually able to do both, especially in the same corp. Yeah, the, the one thing that we've been kind of wrestling with, I, I've got one guy, uh, Aniac, uh, he's, he's my partner in the corp, and uh, Priest is actually, uh, we, we just promoted him to partner a few days ago. But me and Annie particularly have been talking about uh, the kill board situation because, you know, with, with bad, expensive, industry-related losses on kill boards, PVPers don't want to join your corporation because, you know, it just looks bad. But with the core of the corporation being for the drug production, at its heart, it's an industry uh, operation, I really don't give a shit about it. But I, I really don't care about kill board statistics. I don't care about the kill death ratios, the isk efficiency. It's nice, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so we're kind of banking on moving into the wormhole space, and there's a lot of people that just want to be in the wormhole space. We're kind of banking on that to help us with the recruitment. And I figure once I've got a bunch of people that are in the corporation that have skill points in combat-related stuff, it shouldn't be that hard to talk him into throwing a warp disruptor on that Tengu. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the, the kill board stats, the efficiency, as long as we're green in terms of looking at the front page and we're killing a bunch of stuff, then I don't really care if the ISK is efficient or anything else. I'm not trying to build that kind of atmosphere or that kind of culture. Yeah, the, the, the people do tend to get uh, really um tied up in the in the minutia of tracking those kind of stats and and the most successful pvp corps i've seen tend to leave those behind because the kind of work you have to do to be really z killboard masters uh is just kind of shitty so so uh let's go ahead and move into the meat of of the the topics um uh Anyone who's heard me on on Hydrostatic knows that I am just obsessed with the whole booster uh, meta. We've done a whole show on it. Um, we have the truckloads of drugs soundbite everywhere, <laughs> and um, so I wanted to bring on someone who who has who has brought who has really done the entire chain start to end and has kept it running because uh there are challenges in that operation that i don't think a new player who would want to try it out uh would understand so um can we talk about some of the choke points in manufacturing and distributing boosters uh, as far as you see it it is so time consuming to produce any quantity of the higher grade boosters so you've got your, your high skill point veteran players that already have the you know, neurotoxin control level five and, and neurotoxin recovery level five and they're heavily mitigating the the chance of side effects and the the severity of side effects when they experience these and they already know, you know what what the odds are they know what the chances are they're building their, their ship fits and, and their doctrine fits around the side effects that they may or may not uh, uh, see. So, you know, recently I actually had a customer point out to me that X Instinct is 
potentially better for use with logistics than mind flood is. And that's, you know, some out of the box thinking that I just had thought of. So it's 55 hours of reaction to produce enough pure compound to make 50 units of a standard booster. And if you want to make an improved booster, you need, what is it, 53, 54 hours worth of that pure standard compound from two different boosters. And then you need to react to that for another 55 hours to get enough to make 50 improved. And if you want to make strong, guess what? Now you got to get 50 units worth of the improved reaction plus another standard reaction going for 50 hours. And then you can take all that and put it back in the oven for 50 more hours to be able to make the 50 strong boosters. We're talking about days here to create the products that a pilot from, say, Pandemic Legion wants. And we do have a couple of PL customers uh, that come to us looking for strong boosters in quantities that, frankly, we've struggled to, to actually keep up with. Um, then you've got, you know, the synthetic boosters. It doesn't take a lot to, to make them. The gas is cheap. Uh, it's the same reactor time, but we'll have a stockpile of synthetic boosters on forever because nobody wants to buy the crap except for people that are scared of the side effects. And the only reason why they're scared of the side effects is because they don't understand that they're not always going to get all four of these penalties. That's why we built our infographic uh, that, you know, we kind of had our little tussle over. Uh, thanks a lot for the graphs. They're beautiful. But uh, we, we, we kind of structured the infographic to call attention to the fact of, you know, if you're just using standard boosters, you're probably not going to see any side effects. Once people realize that, then they want to buy the standards, but they're afraid of the improved and the strong because the chance of the side effect is, is a lot higher and the effect, you know, the penalty is a lot stronger if they get hit with it. So when, when players graduate from synthetic, a lot of them will kind of just level out with standard and they're fine there for the next two or three years until they're really fighting with capital ships all the time, then they want to improve, then they want strong. So how are we going to get enough pure standard compound together to even run an improved reaction when every single day we're getting cleared out and, and we're getting big orders for standard boosters? People want 50 units, 100 units. I've, I've had an order for 200 units of standard blue pill. You know, I was able to fill it, but then I didn't have any pure standard blue pill to go in and make an improved blue pill. So here comes Pandemic Legion guy number three asking for 50 units of improved blue, and I'm just, you know, sitting on my hands. There's nothing I can do for him. Well, and it comes down to, um, for those who, who don't use boosters, uh, that the the sort of secret sauce behind this behind the scenes is that um, if you build the ship correctly, you can negate a lot of the problems with boosters that if you go and you look through the booster side effects, like for instance, the, uh, I'd have to pull up the information. I don't have it handy right this second, but like the armor repair, uh, exile, uh, booster will improve your, your, your armor repair, but it will, the things that it could potentially damage three out of the four you don't care about on an, on an armor ship. Right. Exactly. Like, uh, don't quote me on this. I don't have the infographic up right now, but, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure one of them for exile is tracking. And then there's, uh, what is it? Missile explosion velocity or whatever. Now, if, if I'm using exile, there's one ship that uses missiles that would armor tank. And that's the sacrilege. That's the only one I could think of. You know, people don't really PvP in damnations where I'm at, so I, I can't really imagine seeing a damnation throwing missiles and actually being on the field. So, you know, you, you, you got one ship where this could be a problem for you. Otherwise, you're pretty much home free, you know what I mean? Like, who cares about missile explosion velocity? And I, By all means, give me that penalty every single time I pop X out. 
Well, and then my personal favorite that I, if I can't think of anything to uh, to to take when I'm undocking is X Instinct because I can tell you most of the ships that I'd want to that I fly, I want to have the lowered signature radius. And so, for instance, I like using it on uh, logistics frigates, especially logistics cruisers, um, and pulling up the information that that your penalties are armor hit points, shield hit points, turret fall off range, and missile velocity. And I can tell you right now, three out of four of those. You can give them to me and I don't care if I'm running a shield logy and you take away my armor hit points. Well, okay, that kind of sucks, but I think that my my signature radius is going to more than make up for that on the thing I'm actually tanking. And turret fall off range, I don't have turrets, so I don't care. Like, um, that's the kind of thing that... that I, I've tried to educate my pilots on because we run in such small gangs that um, booster use really does uh, add that extra layer of that extra force multiplier that lets you either surprise someone who's not expecting it or make up for maybe a skill deficiency or do something that keeps you in the fight that extra 10 seconds to kill that guy who who might be flying better than you or uh, just as getting more lucky than you. Um, and and I absolutely love the stuff. Now, unfortunately, again, I, I echo your problem that um, most people don't want to move up the the strength chain because your odds of getting so on a on a on a on a standard booster your odds are at least over 50 percent that you won't see any detriment you won't roll into any uh any penalty but as you move up the chain that means that the 50 percentile uh chance on on improved is to get your you should expect to get one and if you're using strong then you need to be ready to prepare you need to be prepared to deal with two and we we hate penalties in MMOs when you're min maxing a minus uh, a penalty of any sort is is apocryphal right yeah definitely and i mean uh, i I, I haven't personally used improved and strong myself. Like I have them on hand. I've I've got ten strong blue pill just waiting for me to get around to train for slipness, you know. Um I, I I'm not flying ships where it's cost effective to be using the, the higher grades personally. I don't do a lot of battleship PvP. But when when I take drop and exile together I actually have had this happen to me three different times where, you know, I'm getting a 25% bonus to my tracking from the standard drop. And then because I've got, you know, the, the neurotoxin skills trained to like level three and level four respectively, I take a 16% penalty to turret tracking. Well, I'm still ahead on my tracking. You know, so, okay, I can deal with that. And I'm ahead more than a synthetic booster's 3%, so you're ahead by, like, 8% on, on your turret tracking. I'm good with that. So, you know, I know it, it would be the same thing if I was taking the improved or the strong. You know, the, the numbers are going to be inflated, but I'm still going to be ahead. So um, I want to go back to the business part, because this is what broke me when I was trying to do boosters in my own corp, is that... Uh, sourcing the materials and doing the logistics is just as hard as doing any uh, low sec or null sec industry uh, in any meaningful quantity. But I I broke down when I was when I realized that I couldn't just go to Jita to get rid of this stuff. That I couldn't. My corp was not ready to absorb the amount that I was willing to that I was ready to produce. So we were we were able to produce some 200, 200 hits a week of anything you'd like. But then we'd use maybe 30 of them. And I was even willing to give it away because I could make up the margin in direct sales if I did the work. But the the problem we had was too much quantity and no way to get rid of it. Can you talk about some of the some of the work you do to get money in the end? Because that's at least where my problem broke down. And, and I expect a lot of other amateur drug enthusiasts may have broken down as well. Anytime I'm traveling, anytime Anik is traveling, we're both spamming the living hell out of local. Whether it's uh, uh, the forum thread on the e forums for, for the want to sell, or the infographic, or just spamming a link to the corpse price list on, on our forum website, 
we're spamming something every single jump and you know linking the channel behind whatever it is that that we're spamming so you know i'm not just going to throw the price list i'm throwing the price list and the link to aia pharmaceuticals and as as i'm going you know through a 20 or 30 jump circuit you know especially if i'm making a delivery and i'm just flying a blockade runner through low sec as i'm going i'll just keep spamming and spamming and spamming and i'll have two or three new faces in the channel whether they stick around you know who knows but i've had plenty of people that'll send me a mail that never were in the channel that say that they heard about it from somebody else so you know it's it's kind of that word of mouth thing to to get our name out there because Essen Wiz has been around for over 10 years. The, these guys are icons. When veteran players think about boosters, they're thinking about Essen Wiz nine times out of ten. I feel like the only way that we're really going to compete is if at least three out of ten are thinking about us. You know, let's get some of that market share, get some people into our channel, and and make them aware of our published price list. They can go on Eve Central and compare those prices to wherever you got sell orders on the market for boosters. And if we ain't the lowest price around, the fact that we're going to deliver directly to you and that we're lower than most of them, that's good enough. Yeah, absolutely. The uh the thing that the thing that I love that's really romantic, I guess, about uh about the booster trade is that um it's everything you'd ever want in the in a hardcore and industry kind of thing is that if, if you love uh, a complicated chain, if you, if you really do get behind like doing the entire chain in house where you're hauling and building and selling and advertising and really going the whole, the whole route, uh, drugs are basically the place to be because I mean, anybody can produce a capital. Anybody can produce tech too. Um, the only other place that gets anywhere close is super capital production. And, uh, you don't need a hundred billion to play in the, uh, to play in the drug market. Yeah. No, I, we, we started out with the 1.3 bill that I had, uh, just in liquid esque when I got started. And, you know, like I said, I made that doing the one cent game, one Eskin and, and Jitta. And 1.3 bill was enough to get, what did I, I started with three medium towers. And each one of those towers was lightly defended, you know, mainly just running the reactions. And uh, I remember going with Caldari towers to begin with because of the higher CPU budget. And that was because I was an idiot. So now I've got, you know, more than three medium towers, uh, a, a lot more reactors than those little Caldari CPU budgets would, would let me run because, you know, I've had to bite the bullet and upgrade to large passes. You, you, you were mentioning having a, a whole ton of stock and not being able to move it. We've actually had plenty of times where I'm looking at, you know, 200, 300 units of something and it's a popular product like standard blue pill and it's just not moving and then all of a sudden somebody comes in and they're like yeah i need five hundred thousand units of it and it's like okay number one i know that you're treating me as a wholesaler because of my prices and you're just going to go and seed your local mall say and i'm okay with that but let's get to some realistic numbers here this is what we can produce what can you do with that let's work let's meet in the middle there and then we can be okay. And, you know, taking that approach, I actually managed with the help of my alliance mates over at S and Wiz, uh, I managed to fill a 2.5 billion S order for a NullSec alliance. And that was his entire aim was to seed his local market with boosters that were going to complement the doctrines that his alliance runs. So it's, it's kind of, weird like right now i'm looking at over 200 units of standard mind flood that i really would have expected to sell by now and over 40 units of improved mind flood that hasn't moved in weeks and i'm just thinking somebody's going to figure out that mind flood will help their alliances launching pilots and then all of that shit's going to be going immediately yeah and you have you have a better stomach than i do on this because uh my number one enemy in in most of my industry stuff that i've had to beat out of people is stockpiling and you have to to be able to do the drug market so um my my bad attitude did not help well, one of the things that we, we keep arguing um, well i mean arguing is not really 
the right word because we're not fighting amongst each other. Like we're we're fighting with ourselves. Is I look at that stockpile of mind flood and I say, you know what? If I put this on the market in the right place, I know that it'll move. But if I put all of it on the market, then when you come into my channel and you need 50 units of you know, improved mind flood, now I don't have it because 10 units are here and 10 units are over there and I got 15 units on sale over there. So I can't take that risk. And the reason why I can't take that risk is because I don't have the, the capacity for production to be able to do both. So that's another part of why you know we, we've moved our production out of Placid, why we're setting up getting more centralized and getting into the wormholes. We've got a lot of ideas for how this is going to help us improve our production capacity. I think that once we've got both things going on at Rare, I can have that stockpile. And then I can have, you know, five alts sitting in various places like, uh, let's say, Bay or Huola or uh, Tama or, you know, Old Man Star and just maintaining sell orders at competitive prices, you know, uh, using our ability to generate the gas in house to kind of price our competitors out of those markets, I will sell at a loss for a year straight if it makes you not try and compete with me. And then I'll charge whatever I want. And then when people see me charging 15 million S per unit of improved exile on the market, and then somebody shares my link and they see that they can get it for 7 million S if they just come to my channel and talk to me directly, I'm okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. It is it is a relationship game uh, more than anything to to um, because I, I know I know this surprised a lot of my my uh, co-pilots was that um, when I showed them the actual numbers that even if we produced in house and we could move the stuff at any reasonable price that um, the actual markup that you see on the market is incredible yeah, because it's, of the it's disgusting. Like, like we're like, I was, I was honestly telling them that if, if we can, if, if we can run a demand in house for one third of the product, then I could go sell the rest of it on whatever time scale it takes because, uh, we could cycle through the products. We could, you know, basically do a whole, we're producing this, this week, this, that next week and, and do everything you need to do to, to get it out there in the world and that we could give away that one third and still be making making back the materials, fuel costs, and putting something in the corporate wallet. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much bigger than people realize because everybody's used to, you know, the capital production chain or the Tech 2 production chain or the T3. And, you know, there's so many people in it now. There's so many people farming those materials that the costs for all of that just get lower and lower and lower. Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things happening right now with, with minerals. I don't pretend to understand half of it, but I know the capital holes are, are seeming to be up a bit. But, you know, in general, every other production chain is so easy. Everybody knows, you know, it's, it's very clear, cut, and simple. You know, this is step one, this is step two. You need material A, and you mix it with material B. And I'll, I'll tell you, this was actually the fourth time that I looked at getting into booster production. The first time I looked at it was uh, I was doing missions for Sancha, Sancha's Nation out in Spain, and I saw, you know, in the loyalty point store, the the BPCs for synthetic phrenics. And I'm like, oh, make drugs. How do you do that? And, you know, I go searching and searching and searching for all this information. I even went in SM Wiz's public channel, Narcotics, and, uh, you know, despite the MOTD in there, I, I actually tried to you know, get some insight, and they were dicks about it. But, you know, I'm a dick about it, too, when people come into my public channel asking me, how do you do this? Because if everybody knew how to do it, where's my money coming from? And uh, even even with the the PDF that Miona from Ataraxia Pharmacies put together way back in the day, kind of putting it all out there, putting it all, this is what you do, this is how it works. I'm looking at it and trying to wrap my head around it, and I'm like, wait, so I have to go to eight different null sex and eight different low sex, and I have to do PVE out there, and I have to probe out this gas, and 
then in order to get the gas at the time, there was no venture, there was no prospect. So, you know, I have to take a hurricane that's got no guns on it, that's got cargo expanders on it to get a few units of gas. And I can't even dock in the stations out here. So I just got to take this hurricane back and forth from null sec to high sec. And yeah, I'm not doing it. You know, now it's a lot easier because we have wormholes. That wasn't a thing back then. It's easier because, you know, you've, you've got the prospect, you've got the venture. You can take a black ops battleship and fling 20 prospects halfway across the galaxy and quietly, secretly get this gas and then get them quietly, secretly out of there. There's a lot of potential to go after the materials. But despite all of the new conveniences that CCP has added into the game that really help this trade, it's still difficult to, to wrap your head around having to get to all these different places to get all these different things and then put it all together. You can't just passively set up a, a tower to mine moon goo and then throw that in a reactor. You've actually got to go out there and put your ass at risk to go and get the stuff. That, I think, is the thing that really keeps people from getting into to the production chain more than anything else, is if you go and buy the gas from Jitta Cell Orders, you're not going to make any money. Well, and even understanding the mechanics of it is the easy part, that that um, you can you can find all the information, and, and I'll try to get that uh, PDF linked in the in the piece when we release it. But yeah, the, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, and I and that's actually what I use to build a lot of my my tools. Is that um, mechanically it's hard, but I mean, so is Tech Two mechanically. Uh, and then once you understand it, it does it all kind of falls into line. But the hard part is, again, that you can produce it, but then moving it is the pain. Is that is that you can put all the money in, you can design a chain, you can make a bunch of drugs. But unless you're ready to go door to door, unless you're ready to build relationships and go through all of the channels to do bulk sale, then you're going to be stuck with 10 times more product than you're ever going to know what to do with. And uh, it's going to be so hard to get anywhere with any of it. It's funny that you mentioned you know, that, that you use the example of door to door because that's actually what I do. Uh, in my real life, I've been door-to-door -door sales have been for a year now, and I've seen some success with it. And it's it's like you mentioned earlier, you know that relationship game. You have to build a rapport with people, and that's so so important. Um, I don't I don't know if I at this point can agree though that I would ever have a stockpile of product that I just can't move because if if worse came to worse, you know, if the activity level of the corporation dropped to the point where with all these people having information in their bio, they're not even playing, so no one's click, uh, clicking on it. If nobody's spamming local you know, as they're traveling, if nobody's in the public channel when I'm offline to greet people and, and to set up these deals and earn their permissions, I would still be able to at least take it somewhere. I mean, faction warfare never stops. So, you, you look at the faction warfare areas, not where there's, you know, 30 random TLF NPC corp guys and they're all in bantams trying to farm esque. I'm talking about, you know, going to Sicily where dead terrorists is, is hanging out. I guess maybe they're a bad example because they seem to be dabbling with production too. Last time I was in Sicily, I saw drug labs on these camps. But, you know, you can go to, to Tama, you can go to HG where. What is it? Shadow Cartel is over there, I think. You know, go to, uh, you know, Dastrin's where, where tissues running around. Like, there's so many people that are in low sec to buy your boosters. And if that fails, mark it up 40% and go put it in, in, in the market and curse and you know, delve and wherever else, you know, in Fountain, wherever there's NPC. Null sex stations. Like, somebody's going to buy this stuff. All you got to do, like, you just got to find, look, look, look at the active hotspots on the kill boards, you know, and, and then whoever's most active around there, look at what they're flying, look at their lost mails. I'm not going to see the bunch of crash if all they're flying is, ten, is uh, Proteus is with rails. I'm going to see the bunch of drop. I'm going to see the bunch of X Instinct for their logic pilots and Mind Club for their logic pilots. 
And if they're running Cerberus games in Delft, then I'm going to see the bunch of crash out there. You know, the 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 market research is it's Eve is real. It's just like real life. You have to do all of the things that somebody in an actual corporation would do to try and figure out where their demographic is at. Yeah, and and you're you're absolutely right. And it comes down to a laziness for legwork myself that. Uh, between real life stuff, there's so many times where I'm like, oh, this would be so great. And I look at the actual activity required. I'm like, nope, that would take logging in every day. And I can't guarantee that. And let's look for something else. Like it just that that that's at least the spot I'm coming from. Not to not to turn off everyone. It's just that, you know, I've got a I've got a thing where I go and I set up systems so they become self-sufficient and then somebody else takes it over. And if I can't make it at least a certain level of simple, then it won't reach critical mass and it won't go out there. So like we did, um, in my corp, we did fitted ship contracts and we guaranteed a margin on them because it's a luxury product. And that took some seed, some seed money and some seed effort and like took a good month of working on it. But then a few other people were like, Oh, this is, this is like free money. Uh, I mean, quote unquote free, big scare quotes free. And they ended up taking it over and I don't have to do any more of it. And that was the hope with our drug thing is that if I could figure out some sort of system that between this tool and that tool and this product and this thing that you could, you know, you could set it and forget it. Drugs was not a set it and forget it kind of kind of option. Well, but part of that, I think, is, you know, in, as far as having a rest of your corporation step in and actually be doing it is I don't know about you, but I have a very difficult time trusting anyone with the role can fake Starbase equipment. And the way CCP has this thing set up, in order to online and offline a silo to put more gas in and to take the finished pure compound out, you got to have can fake Starbase equipment. There's no getting around it. Well, except that that final product is worthless, so it's so hard to steal. Like, um, I, we've had we've had a similar thing where uh, we were doing the regular reactions, the regular moon reactions, and people are like, "Oh, are you worried about people stealing it?" I'm like, "Go ahead, steal the precursors. To tell me, tell me how much money you're actually going to make." Like. Unless you follow the plan, unless you get it out, and and if you try to ship it out, the the jump freighter guys will see it, and it's too big to haul in a regular thing. So go ahead, try and steal it. Make and and like, I I know that no one in my corp is. Uh, we we we're pretty we're pretty chill bros. It's not been a problem, but like we've always set up systems like go ahead, steal it. I dare you. Like the only thing you're going to do is be a dick. <laughs> you're not going to hurt anything. I I don't have that benefit because i mean like there's 18 members in the corp right now and what seven at least are alts so like starting out with just myself i got to a, i got to a point where i'm realizing that three medium caldari towers isn't going to cut it and that i'm going to need more bros I'm, I'm, i need people to you know help with with material acquisition and you know promotion and sales there, there has to be more than just me doing it. So, you know, with recruitment, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out, I'm looking at SNWs and I'm saying, there's five, six different people in this channel, and every single one of them is responding when someone comes in there asking to buy drugs. So I know it's more than just one guy selling. How are they doing it? Everything that I've done with Akatera Integrated Astrometrics has been me brainstorming on how the hell are they accomplishing how have they done this for 10 years and i've never seen a major court theft or anything come out about s and wiz s and wiz has never folded you know the the alliance hedonistic imperative has been up and down you know they've been a force and then they've been quiet you know right now we're quiet and we're not really trying to kick over anybody's sand castles. Nobody's really trying to kick over our sand castles. And we're just making our drugs and, and staying relaxed, you know? And and I'm I'm looking at it and, and it's like, how have they weathered the storm and they're still in narcotics. They're still making and selling boosters. Now that we're in the alliance and we're closer with some ways, I've come to find out that the systems that we came up with that we put in place are nothing like what SM Wiz is doing. Like I built my, my systems to compete with the boogeyman. And, you know, I, I kind of attributed idealistic 
perfect situation kind of, of theories to what SM Wiz must have going on. And we were actually a lot closer to where they are when we joined the Alliance because of that. You know, in, in a few short months, we don't have anywhere near, you know, the ISP reserve or the stockpile of product that they have to work with. And obviously, you know, the expertise, they've got the, the combat sites, they've got the, the gas mine, and they've got everything down to, to a science. They could do the stuff in their sleep, those guys. But in terms of just merchandise and, and business uh, and our, our internal system for you know, how we pay our guys for what they do, we're a lot closer than uh, than what I expected, and what what we're really focused on is how do I bring people in and allow them to have fun and make money without putting the corporation at risk? Because I don't know these guys, and these guys don't know that the stuff that they could potentially steal isn't really that valuable. Um, obviously, gas is too big to steal, but the pure compound if pure compound went for a walk, it would hurt. Because a lot of gas goes into one unit of your compound, you know, it's, it's not cheap. So what, what we've done is we've set it up so that without actually having to have access to the towers, every single member of Akatera Integrated Astrometrics can set you up with, with your product. All you have to do is talk to them. They'll quote you your price. They'll walk you through setting up that want to buy contract. And then someone that does have access to the product will make the delivery within 24 hours. And whoever it was in house that sent me a mail directly with the link to that contract that they brokered, they make a commission on that. So without having to have anything to do with the towers, I'm going to make sure that that guy gets their money for, you know, the time and the effort that they put into building that relationship. And then there's been plenty of times where, where I've been online and someone will pop into AIA pharmaceuticals and they'll say, Hey, where's any, is any online? What's going on? Where, when's the next time any is going to be online? Because that's his customer. You know, that's his client. This guy knows that any cut him a great deal and that's who he wants to talk to. He doesn't want to talk to me. Who, who am I? I'm just the CEO of the corporation. I want to talk to Amyik. You know, that, and that's the kind of thing that I was shooting for. That's the kind of thing that, that I want to see grow. Yeah, uh, and it's, it has. It's, it's slow going, but it's definitely grown. Well, and and I want to reiterate the the biggest point on there is that um, if you want to if you want to run a big industry operation and you want and you need that trust because I absolutely understand the pain is that. Uh, Cutting a fair deal with your line members goes a very long way to to building that trust in Corp. Of um, as much as the mechanics suck, the the truth is that um, you can set it up so that you and maybe a couple trusted bros can do the the parts that are the most dangerous. But as long as you are treating your your corp mates fairly and cutting them in on the deal and not just trying to screw your line members, uh, they're more than happy to come to you to give you their work uh, as long as they feel like they're a partner in the relationship rather than um, a a just a shill, <laughs> which I know a lot of industry corps tend to treat some of their miners that way. Yeah, and and I don't I don't want to be just another indie corp. I I don't want for my guys to feel like I'm just giving them ten or fifteen percent below Jitta and they're just another idiot in a venture. Like that's not what I want for myself. I could, I don't get the current you know model for industry corporations. When I was at Nolsa, okay, ten percent below Jitta seems reasonable because you know. It's our jump freighter. It's our Oracle that's taken the shit to and from Empire. Like, it's not you having to do this from Omist, 63 jumps away from the nearest freaking low site. You know, so 10% below Jitter is reasonable. But, you know, people tell me that there's high sec mining corporations that just have a bunch of drones in, in hopes or retrievers or procurers if they're afraid of getting ganked. And they're, you know, mining this feldspar and they're selling it to the corporation at 10 or 15 percent below Jitta. And that boggles my mind because, you know, God forbid I should ever have to mine anything. But if I did and somebody told me to give it to them for 15 percent below Jitta, I would undock my phantasm. Screw that. 
I'm not doing it. But this is what people do. Even though it's it's not as profitable as it could be, I feel like paying my guys to buy for the gas that they harvest, that's them putting the effort of going all the way to Judah and getting the most money that they could have gotten for that gas, except that gas is coming to the court. And I'm still going to make more money than if I went to Judah and bought it from the sell order. That's, you know, that's some one center put up. Like somebody doing what I was doing to make my first billionaire is flipping this gas. I'm not going to pay 80000 per unit. I'm going to pay 73000 per unit. And I'm going to maintain a low price point that's competitive. And that's going to be why people keep coming to me. That's going to be why my guys continue to take their prospects out to, you know, Wicked Creek and Fountain and Delve and wherever else to go and get this crap when they could just as well have been running incursions. Yeah. And, and I mean, the, the other, the other big secret there that you're, you're hinting on is um, both sides are saving time. You're, you're getting the product without having to do the logistics step. They're getting their money without having to haul it all over creation. So um, <laughs> we could talk about this all day and I want to get a couple more questions out before we end here. Um, you guys had an IPO bond and um I know that there were some there was some talk there was a a talk at FanFest where someone was talking about high end um uh investment structures. Can you talk about setting up that IPO and how uh the experience of of working through those those forums worked for you and uh what what if somebody was looking to raise a bunch of capital what they should be thinking about if they're going to go to this going to go down that route. I I actually when, when I knew that I needed to, to expand, I wanted to expand quickly because I'm not a very patient person, right? So I remembered back in the day, you know, when, when Rick Dick was around with Eve Beck, and uh, uh, there used to be like a stock market thing. I forget the name of the guy that was running it, but, you know, people would, would do these IPOs and, and buy and sell shares. And then there was somebody that was actually like keeping track of who owned what shares and, and, you know, what the word was for those player corporations, what these shares are valued at and, you know, what they're being bought and sold for. So I was actually looking for that and I found out that that's not a thing anymore. And what I wound up finding was I saw one player that had made a whole bunch of money off of an IPO. And I saw another player that made a whole bunch of money, well, borrowed a whole bunch of money uh, with a bond. And I went to the in-game channel for, you know, the, the trade discussions and started asking questions in there. You know, I, I wanted to talk to somebody that was really involved in that part of the game. I wound up talking to uh, Elizabeth Norn from... What's this corporation called? Nornir Research. And you know, they're big on trading uh, uh, blueprints and blueprint copies, among other things. And I also spoke to Sister 2 uh, behind the Eve Museum. And between the two of them, you know, speaking to the two of them separately, they both gave me a lot of, uh, a lot of encouraging insight. And, you know, the, the thing that they really, really stressed was it's about your reputation, you know. Because there's a lot of people that are stupidly space rich that have more risk than they're ever going to be able to do anything with. And for the most part, those folks just want that is to be working. And if they feel like they can trust your reputation, because they don't know you, why would they trust you? But if they feel like they can trust your reputation and trust the fact that you have a reputation that's worth protecting, that you don't want to see that get screwed up, then they'll work with you. And uh, I, I, I went back and I used an example of a bond that somebody else had run literally years ago through the market discussion forum. And I kind of, you know, I, I copied and pasted it into, uh, into Notepad. And then section by section, I replaced all of the text. You know, I, I didn't want to copy the idea. I just wanted the, the format, the structure of it to make sure that, that I hit all the bullet points that, an avid market discussion reader would, would actually be looking for. And unexpectedly, you know, looking for five billionists to upgrade from the medium towers to the large towers and, and get more reactors online, 
unexpectedly and got that five billion is filled overnight. And that's actually coming to a close here on uh, in five days on November 20th. We are going to be expected to pony up 5.125 billion S to our seven investors. And that money is sitting in a separate wallet division, just waiting for the 20th. Yeah, you know, no further effort needed there. And we still have more billion esque in unsold product and about two billion esque in pure compound that hasn't been turned into product yet. So I think that's been a very successful experience for us. And I, I just, I really want to thank Sister Sister from Eve Museum and uh, uh, Elizabeth Norn from Norn Air Research for the advice and the insight that they gave me on how to approach the market discussion crowd. I, I think that if not for talking to those two, I probably would have gotten laughed off of MD and might even still be working with Medium Towers and Placid instead of taking over a wormhole system. Yeah, that's definitely um, – that. that's one piece that I know a lot of players will sort of cringe against is that um, we always want to do it ourselves, right? Is that you, you sit there and you're like, I have this great idea, but I need $5 billion or $10 billion esque to really make it happen. I understand, you know, I need – if I just had that money, I could I could expand to do all this stuff. And I don't know if it's – pride that keeps us from asking it or the the fact that uh who will give us the money kind of thing but um i know personally i've run internal bonds to to pay for projects of uh varying success levels and it's it's i find it interesting to just how active and uh, open the the general market will be where if you really need credit and you have a decent idea and you aren't trying to scam anybody, um, that you can still get what you need to move to move an idea forward, um, and and it won't cost you you know hundreds of dollars to buy the plex to go get it or 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 um, trying to pon- get convince all of your friends please 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 give me a billion of your isk. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's when the Oracle first came out. Maybe it had been out for a little bit, but like when when it first came out, everybody's you know in this mad scramble to to get their hands on one. And here we are in Omis doing this this mining and capital building, and you know we we've got the mining foreman links or whatever on on battle cruisers and what have you. And it's like, wow, they made this ship for us. So it was kind of a big thing. But like, we would never have that much liquid just sitting around. Like everything was always getting flipped back into you know what we needed to buy to keep the production going, and you know it's profitable, but the profit's going back into the business to to expand. And you know instead of having two capital ships in in the oven now, we've got three, and you know, great, good for us. We're successful in Eve, and then CCP threw the Oracle at us, and it's like we can't afford that. <laughs> So what we wound up doing was uh, we offered shares to just members for that corporation, uh, you know, a, kind of a profit sharing system, I guess. And we valued those shares at 10 million esque of hop, and we created like 400,000 to sell. And within a couple of weeks, you know, our members had bought up every available share, and we had four bill and went and got that work. Over. And, you know, so I, I kind of had that memory going, except now I didn't have 183 members that are all getting rich off of mining, you know, ABC ores. So that wasn't going to work out. But I felt like it was growing on what I could do with the three medium towers, but it would grow so much faster if I had the large towers and if I had enough gas to put in to get those reactions going. And... uh it's it's been beautiful. There, I'm not going to say that it's been perfect. There has definitely been times where reactors were offline because of you know, me wanting to hold out and see if my guys would be able to source the gas in house rather than having to go and buy in it and then adjusting my price list to reflect that. So you know, there, there's been times where I haven't been able to fill a order or where I've needed S and Wiz's help to be able to fill a order, but. Like I said earlier, it's kind of the point of moving into the wormhole is we're going to have more sources of income now. So if my guys, let's just say, for example, I need amber, really, really need amber. 
and get off my lawn as being particularly voracious about getting people off their lawn, then just having them go out there is not going to work. So I got to buy it from the market. Now, if we're farming the wormhole and the corporation is buying the wormhole stuff at 10% below to the buy and then taking and liquidating it and getting that 10% profit, then the 10% profit that we made off of the wormhole crap is going to cover the extra money that we have to spend to get the gas from the seller, which means my price point stays the same, stays nice and attractive, and I don't have to cringe at raising the prices that are listed on, on the website that I'm linking to people in the, in the channel. That's really the point of coming into the wormhole. Now, now that it's, uh, it's all going to be centralized, I'm not going to have people in Iridia, people in Molten Heath, people in Lone Track, people in Placid. I'm just going to all have, you know, these are the exits from the wormhole. This is where we're going today. This is what we're doing today. I think everybody's going to be able to benefit. You know, and, and when I say everybody, I mean me, I mean my pilots, I mean our customers. Everybody's going to be able to benefit from this move right here. And I wouldn't have gotten to this point if not for successfully completing that bond and getting the rapid growth and the rapid expansion that that influx of is created for us. So, I mean, if, if you're out there trying to, trying to make something work, whether you're getting into tech two, tech three, you know, trying to scale up tech one production, if you're just a trader and you're, and you're trying to get from Renz and now you want to you know, open up in heck two, or, or whatever it is, if you think that the only thing stopping you is getting some more ISK, then, you know, take your case before the court of market discussion, because these people have ISK, and if it's, a, if it's a good idea, then you'll have the ISK that you need to get that started. Yeah, I, I absolutely second all of that, because it's, um, I haven't done it publicly, but uh, the returns on just getting it, getting it through, it turns out ISK is a lot cheaper than a lot of us really think it is. Yeah, because I mean, I'm, I'm 34 years old. I've got a fiance. We have a four month old daughter as of four days ago. So four months and four days old. I can't just turn around and drop a hundred bucks on plexus to get an ISK infusion. That's not an option for me. You know, my fiance yells at me because I'm actually paying my two accounts with cash. Well, and and then I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum where um, things are things are lining up well, and I just don't have in-game time. So Plex looks really great on the other side of the equation. So it is a continuum, and if you don't have if if like just like you said, if ISK is what's keeping you from doing a project, and your project isn't completely stupid there are definitely ways to go raise it. And, and you know, on the other side of that same coin, if your idea is completely stupid, the market discussion forum is a great place to find that out. Yeah, you, you at least save the time and the effort. <laughs> right, exactly. So um, to wrap up the, the main section of the, of the interview here, um, again, as much as I love boosters, they continue to be a really corner mechanic. Um, and as much as if you get the chance to be one-on-one -on -one with someone to explain that, oh, no, 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 you don't understand. This is like the deep, dark secret of Eve, and you've been missing out for years, and let me explain the the pieces that you're, that you're misunderstanding. Um, what do you think that CCP can do to improve drug use or bring more booster use into the game? Uh, I was actually talking to somebody in SM Wizards Narcotics channel uh, a couple nights ago about link calls. And everybody hates link alts except for the people that run link alts. And really, even they hate link alts. Like, they hate the fact that they have to do this in order to be competitive. And so, you know, me me and one of the SMWiz guys were, were kind of going on about how, well, boosters are your equalizer, you know? And that's true, but only up to a point. A link salt has a lot of versatility, whereas the boosters, there's eight. There's eight things that you can get a bonus to, and you're going to risk a drawback. You know, you're, you're going to risk up to four drawbacks for each of those things. Whereas the Link Salt, he doesn't have drawbacks. He has skills that he can train to get to the Tech 2 for the stronger boost. Like, it, it, it's, it's a good theory, but it's kind of broken. And I think that the main improvement that could be made is... 
you know, other than fixing link alts and making them have to actually be on grid to provide their benefit, I think more boosters. You know, we've got one slot three booster, missile uh, missile explosion radius. Now, what about explosion velocity? What about missile velocity? What about missile flight time? I still want a drone a drone booster because I still feel like being Galente, you miss out on a lot of drone uh, drug use. Absolutely, drone boosters could could go into slot three, you know, because you, you've got one missile booster for slot three. Slot two is all turret boosters, and then slot one is you know tank slash ship uh, ship performance. Like there's there's not enough variety or versatility in what you can get out of boosters to where you know people aren't that attracted to looking at all the possibilities. I think. Well, and and as we talked about at the beginning, there is sort of an art to the way that the boosters work is that, at least the ones we have now, like we said, there's three, there are four, there are four drawbacks, but usually three of them are negligible. So how do you, how do you design a new drone booster that gives you the drone thing you want, like maybe drone speed, but then what are the three things that you can, that you can nuke off of a Galente drone ship <clears throat> that that they're willing to give up and the fourth thing uh like i guess armor amount or structure amount might be the the penalty but it, it's it's definitely an art to create them um i don't know if the the game designers on the other side are also thinking well do we want to how do we want to address the uh the gas um the gas part of it because as you as you know the um each gas goes into each booster, at least at the at the at the standard level. And would you have to then mix two gases together to get another to get another booster? Like, where does that where does that go on the production chain? Yeah, that that's definitely a uh, a valid point. You know, since there's eight booster types and there's eight gas types, I think introducing more gas, you know, uh, in, in, introducing more gas in, in more regions and. I think that rather than having the effect of watering down the gas market as it is currently, I, I think that would actually make all the gases more expensive because, I mean, realistically, there, there's two types of flyer, well, three. There's three types of flyer that I see going out and mining case-based gas. That's, you know, the same movie in the venture that's in the wormhole mining the wormhole gas and they're just mining some gas and they don't even have any idea what the hell it is that, that they're mining. They just see that the buy order in their local market hub is nice. And there's a wormhole that opens up in in, you know, Bowen or Wicked Creek or wherever they're going. So good for you, new bro. Thanks for helping the economy. Then you've got your your incumbents. You know, get off my lawn is is up there in the north, and they own that space, and they're exploiting it for all it's worth. And like I said, they're very voracious about getting people off of that damn lawn. You know, so they're going to to be pulling in that gas and probably filling some traders' buy order out there for forty k a unit, and then this guy's going to jump it out and, and and bring it to Jitter and charge one twenty five on a sell order because he's an asshole. Then you've got us and we know what we're going after we know where to find it and we know the different ways that you can go about getting there and getting back with your heart if you added more gas to more places you're still going to have those three players you know you're going to have very few and far between groups like us and we're going to find our way to these other places to get these other new gases and then you're going to have the people that live there and they'll be pulling in a little bit of it and then deciding that it's not worth their time because the whole production chain that it's involved with is too difficult or too complicated. And then you're going to have the random new bro that popped out of a random wormhole. And if he doesn't get dropped on by a saber, then good for him. He made a couple hundred mil real quick. It's not really going to hurt anything if they added more gases to the game and seeded those gases in specific regions, just like the gases that we have now are. Now, I'll go out to the Kalevala Expanse to get the new drone gas. That's fine. I'm I'm good with that. Yeah, I guess that does end up uh, being better. I'd, I'd love to sit down with the CCP and really pick their brain about it because it's... It was really exciting when they came out, and I know that they went through a big renovation um, 
like I want to say around Empyrean age, but I, I you'd have to we'd have to go double check. And they just never really caught on. There aren't a ton of players using them, and it's all it's a very niche thing. And I'd really love it's another one of those things that's so wonderfully Eve. They're illegal to move around and they give you this great bonus, but uh, you have it could cost you this other thing. And and they're, they're just one of my favorite mechanics in game. And I'd love to see more people using more drugs uh, because drugs are awesome. <laughs> Check with the drugs, right? So um, I think that's going to bring our, uh, our our time here to a close. Um, do you want to uh, pimp any of your projects on your corp or send any more shout outs to your, uh, to your friends? Yeah, you know, one, one guy I'd like to shout out, Sam Zuma. He is the CEO of S and Wiz, which, you know, we, we've talked about them a little bit. They're the oldest drug corporation in Eve. Um, just the most solid reputation in the business. These guys are really great to work with. When we got serious about the uh, the booster production, me and Zam actually started talking. When I sent him a mail about one of his guys kind of you know being a dick on Facebook, and you know Zam was really cool about that, and you know we we just hit it off. And as much as they might be jerks, and as much as I might be a jerk, if somebody comes into our public channel asking, you know, what's the secret? How do I make billions of this selling dank drugs like he actually offered pointers and like he was asking me what i was doing and, and you know what problems i'd have you know where i'd had success and suggesting things like you know without telling me point blank this is what we do he's pointing me in the right direction and as much as the five billion is bond that huge help he did have to do that like to go out of his way to help a competitor grow so big Big respect, big love for uh, for Zam Zuma and Essen Wiz. And, you know, it was kind of a natural thing when we finally wound up joining the alliance with them. So um, I want to thank you once again for coming on. It was really great to uh, talk to someone who actually wins at the drug game, unlike I ended up doing. So um, it's really great hearing from a real professional uh, experience on that. So thanks again for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's been fun.